Welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid 3. In the last episode, we witnessed a rather disturbing scene involving Colonel Vulgan basically forcing Sokolov to, co to uh, cooperate in finishing the Shagohod. And, well, Sokolov didn't actually get tortured at all, but the woman he was with, Tatiana, was, in was tortured. And I'm not entirely sure when you're supposed to figure this out. Cause I get it's really kind of obvious, but I get the weird feeling that in the game you're not actually supposed to Oh uh, damn, I got this go. I get a feeling that you're not actually supposed to realize that Tatiana and Eva are the same person. But it is kind of obvious. Get the hell out of there, bro. Anyway, Vulgan tortured Ava and uh, to force Sokolov to cooperate. So here we are. Now we have to continue on. And, well, we're not quite sure where the, the Shagohot is, but we're eventually going to have to deal with that eventually, you know. Oh, look at this place. Up, oh, gunshot wound. Don't need a suture kit for that. Now, in this place, you're going to have to be a little bit careful. There are no enemies here, but there are a couple of poisonous animals, so you don't really have to worry about them. You keep moving and you're good. That's a poisonous frog down there. Don't worry about it. But there are traps. Where are these traps? There's one. See the rope? You hit it, and something comes down to kill you. I ain't no sucker. I ain't getting hit by no traps. Okay. The, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. We're at the lab, though. We're at a lab. Now this is not where the Shagohot is, so don't get excited. But we're going to have to sneak our way in. From electric fence, two guards, and a dog. So let's, uh... Let's find a way in. Ah, shit. Nope, nope, just a dog. The dog can't radio for help, can it? Okay, we're doing a little bit better if we pick different camouflage. Although I'm not quite sure why. 90%, that's nice. Come on, pooch. It's just to tranquilize the gun, don't freak out. Now there's a hole in the electric fence over this direction. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, there it is. Nope, oh, snake. That ah, looks like a good meal. My phone's making noises, that's what that beeping was. Gotta be careful about noise, because the enemies in this game pay more attention to noise than they do in the earlier Metal Gear games. <laughs> Had I just ran up behind him, he would have turned around and seen me. Even if I tried walking up behind him, he would still hear you coming. So you gotta use the direction pad to slowly move the character. It's one of the many reasons why I chose to actually play this on a PlayStation rather than trying to emulate it, because the controls don't always work out. Plus parts of the game emulate very slowly. Oh, looks like he woke the dog up. Oh, 
Dog's down. Huh? It's another advantage to using a tranquilizer Ooh. gun. If you don't hit them, if you don't take them down in the first shot, they will not always react as though you got, as though you had shot them. If I had pulled out the 1911 and shot him in the back, he would realize he got shot. Okay, how do we get in here? Well, let's ask for help. Okay, the way you have to get in here is to, well, basically knock on the door. Because no one's going to come out on their own and the door is locked. Huh? Okay, just a second. Hmm, impatient, aren't we? Okay, let's dispose of this guy real quick. You don't have to, but, you know, it's always fun. I love the CQC mechanic in this game, because if you get swarmed by enemies in the earlier Metal Gear games, you had to punch them down a bunch of times, or throw them, or shoot them. This, grab them, throw them down, move on to the next guy. And it actually makes the game a little bit too easy. See if we can do that again. There we go. Now there's something in here you're going to want to go and get. XM16... What was that? XM16E1. Now if that looks a little bit familiar, which... It's hard to tell with the little screen. It's because it's basically an M16. Now, if you were to go and call Sigint up and ask him about it, he would tell you it was not an AR-15, uh, which is the uh, which is what the uh, I think it's a different name for the M16. Now, why the Soviets? have an M16, or I guess this is a prototype for the M16 in their inventory, I don't know, but they have it. Nope, we're going to have a little bit of a cutscene up here. Good, you've infiltrated the lab. The security on the inside is very tight. You'll find it difficult to look for Sokolov unless you're disguised as a scientist. Use the clothes that Eva gave you to disguise yourself as a scientist. To disguise yourself as a scientist, go into the survival viewer and select scientist from the uniform option on the camouflage screen. Just remember to remove your face paint. To remove your face paint, choose no paint from the face option of the camouflage screen. You want to save? Hold on a sec. Snake, have you ever seen On the Beach? No, I don't know it. It's about the survivors of the Third World War. The entire Northern Hemisphere is obliterated in a nuclear holocaust, and it's only a matter of time before the few survivors left in the Southern Hemisphere are poisoned by the deadly fallout. Their only hope is an American nuclear submarine that escapes to the Southern Hemisphere. They set out for the Arctic to investigate the fallout. The movie came out in 59, and the year that the war was supposed to happen was 1964. In other words, this year. Nice warning. Let's hope it stays just a movie. Okay. Uh, you have to disguise yourself as a scientist using the scientist's clothing. The clothing. But uh, I'm actually going to be screwing around a little bit before I go there, knocking people around and all that. The uh, XM16, uh, whatever the hell they call that thing in this game. That, like I was saying before, was based on the AR-15, which is the base of the M16. 
And it was a weapon that came around about around this time. I'm not quite sure when the AR-15 was developed, but it was you. It was implemented to replace the M14 as the first assault rifle that the United States military used. The M14 was a battle rifle, and well, it, <laughs> it has kind of a checkered history, you know, doesn't it? It was brought into the Vietnam War to replace the M14, and it didn't really do so well. Unfortunately, it did so poorly that it kind of got a bad reputation that lingers on to this day, even if it's somewhat unjustified nowadays. The problem was it's a complex weapon, and it's one... Oh, you gotta, you gotta do something about these guys. Because they, uh, the scientists will, will recognize that you're not one of them. Ah, damn. Discovered. Well, the M16 was a, a bit of a failure when it was first introduced because it jammed a lot. It was a complex machine. They didn't train the soldiers how to clean it, how to maintain it. And they did not train them how to fire a weapon on full auto, which, uh, the assault rifle could do. So basically, the weapon was either jamming, or they were standing there and just emptying their magazine in a few seconds, and then reloading without really aiming. It didn't work out too well. It got a really bad reputation. Eventually, they uh, worked out the kinks in the manufacturing process. But from what I understand, they uh, the original like prototypes. The AR-15 prototypes. They were actually pretty freaking badass. Plus, the people who used them were trained on how to use them, so it's a completely different story. And that's probably what we have right now: one of the prototypes rather than one of the shitty production models. This is an area of the game I don't really like. You have to disguise yourself as a scientist, and I obviously am not disguised as a scientist right now, but the problem I have with it is, if you, uh, oh, you do not have to put the mask on, I just do it anyway. If you get discovered, it can be a real bitch to shake off your pursuers in this area, because all the, uh, corridors are narrow, enemies come from every direction, it be a real pain. Fortunately, the guards will not recognize you as being a threat unless you run up and punch them. You just have to stay clear of the scientists, and if they see you, take them out real quick. Okay, I'm just screwing around right now. There is one weapon in this game that you can use. I believe it's only one weapon. That you can use while disguised as a scientist, and that is a sort of cigar weapon, like something you'd see in James Bond, where you bite on it and it shoots out some sleeping powder or some crap like that. Okay, we don't really need to be here. Now, if you drop over this, it takes you to the outside of the lab, the inside wall. Now, if you stay dressed as the scientist, you're not going to get very far. Let's give that a try. Your camouflage is horrible. You're, uh... You're gonna get seen. Yep, they all saw me almost immediately. They think you're a scientist. Get back to work. So they send you back in to get back to work. Now where they put you off, where they drop you off, is in the jail cells. Which is fortunate is all hell for us, because this is pretty close to where we need to be. Oh yeah. 
Okay, yeah, this is it. Be careful, there would be scientists around here. <laughs> Someone's talking to me right now. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, here we are. Inside of the door, not this door. This other door over here is a weapon that we can use. Um, I don't know if I picked it up or not. <laughs> this guy up a lot. Ow. Okay, he's down. Leave him alone. <laughs> Reminds me of high school. It's a terrible TV. It's a big screen for something out of the 60s though, isn't it? Nothing here for you. Now in here is the weapon I was talking about. Sig gas spray. Disguised as a cigarette. Shoots out some sort of gas. Take something off. There we go. Now the range is really short, so you have to be standing right in front of your enemy. But it's a quick way of taking him down, and you don't even have to stop walking to do it. So you can take down a bunch of guys really quick. You may even occasionally want to use this when you're not disguised as a scientist. Although, you know, very specialized circumstance there, wasn't it? Go take him out. Get up there and take him out. This guy, too. Sorry, bro. All up here's our door, and we have a cutscene coming up. If you're looking for Sokolov, he's not here anymore. <laughs> Put that thing away, you'll spoil my drink. So, you're the intruder everyone's talking about. Typical capitalist dog. No manners. <sighs> and who are you? You mean you've never heard of me? And you call yourself an agent? Very well, then. I am Alexander Leonovich Granin. A man of some importance, if I do say so myself. I am the foremost weapon scientist in the Soviet Union. And the head of the glorious Granin Design Bureau. This is the Order of Lenin. It is an honor of the greatest magnitude, given along with the title of Hero of Socialism to only the finest workers. It was awarded to me in recognition of my brilliant contributions to society. 
Since the Great Patriotic War, I have created countless weapons in the service of our great communist society. It was thanks to me that we were able to stamp out the Nazi scum. It was I who created the basic design for the mobile ballistic missile system you know and fear as SS-1C. He's talking about the Scud missile. <sighs> You're crocked, aren't you? I'm nearly drowning my sorrow. Because of him, I've got nothing to do but sit here and drink this crap. Him? Sokolov. It's him you're looking for, isn't it? Because of him, I have been stripped of my authority. My research has come to nothing. Look! It is a revolutionary mobile nuclear missile system. A bipedal tank. Oh, look at that. A bipedal tank? Yes, a walking tank. A robot. Are you familiar with the theory of the missing link between apes and humans? Well, this technology will be the missing link between infantry and artillery. A kind of metal gear, if you will. And this magnificent metal gear will mark a revolutionary step forward in weapons development. Metal gear? But I won't be used so easily. No, no crying myself to sleep. For you see, I'm going to send these documents to my friend in the United States. What? These bastards will live to regret this. And when they themselves become the targets of my creation, they will know my true greatness. Yes, Sokolov's pathetic shagohard pales in comparison to my work. What are you going to do with a rocket engine on a tank? About Sokolov. A tank does not need a rocket. It needs something else. Look at these. Nice shoes. No. Legs. Legs that allow it to go anywhere. Just as when humans learn to walk upright. That is the real revolution in weaponry. Don't you agree? But, the fool's in charge, chose Sokolov. And where is Sokolov? My project has been terminated. The philosopher's legacy has been handed over to him. What the hell are you talking about? The philosopher's legacy. Haven't you heard of the philosophers? The Colonel has inherited their immense legacy. Volgin's father was in charge of the Philosopher's money laundering activities. In the confusion of the war, they somehow ended up with their treasure. And Volgin inherited that treasure illegally. We never need to worry about the military budget. The development costs at our facility are all paid out of the Colonel's deep pockets. The weapons born here will be the genes for creating an entirely new form of warfare. The funding for my research came out of that legacy. Came out of it. Now, my money, my men, all have been diverted to the Shagohod project. Tomorrow, they will be conducting the final test, while Sokolov is making the final preparations in the weapons factory at Volgin's main base, the great fortress of Grozny Grad. Here I am, playing host to an enemy spy and drinking myself into a stupor. That's where they moved Sokolov? Yes. And the Shagohod is there too? Of course. Hey! You're not thinking of going to Grozny Grad. Are you mad? It's an impenetrable fortress. 
I'm sure it is. You'll be killed. I'll take my chances. Wait. What? Listen to me, you fool. I want to help you. Help me? To thank you for your compliment. What compliment? My shoes. Tatiana gave them to me. I wanted to thank you for complimenting me on them. I'll tell you how to get into the fortress. In return, I ask only that you get that idiot out of there and destroy the Shagohad. There is an underground tunnel that runs around the perimeter of the fortress. You should be able to use it to sneak into the base. Head for the mountains. The entrance to the tunnel is located there. Take this. You passed through a warehouse on your way here, didn't you? Yeah. There should have been a locked door inside of it. Do you remember it? Uh... This key... will open that door. Beyond that door lies a vast jungle. You can climb up into the mountains from the far end of the jungle. Go back to the warehouse. Use the key to open the locked door and head for the mountains. Got it? Why are you helping me? Unlike Sokolov, the thought of defecting has never once crossed my mind. I love my country. I love this land. I cannot even imagine living anywhere else. I wish to remain a hero of the great motherland. I cannot bear the thought of being hounded into a corner and left to waste away. It is already dawn. You must hurry. I will remain here and nurse my troubles for a little longer. To capitalism! Well, we got our information. And that'll be the end of the episode. So, thank you for watching.